the spider spinning his web for the unwary fly. The blood is the life, Mr. Renfield. I am Dracula. Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make. All right, everyone, welcome back to Master of the Universe podcast. Joey Cage here along with CJK, motherfucker to the max, and the old man beast, Gabe. So, you know, what's uh, what's everyone been up to, man? I've been watching the fuck out of this um, Ray Donovan series and uh, craving, of course, the dog wants to start crying as soon as I start doing this, craving uh, hot Fritos. That's a weird one. And uh, what's another one? I had the Pico de Gallo burger from Whataburger the other uh, last weekend, and it was oh, delish. Yes. I'm telling you, there's nothing better than like drinking till like three in the morning, and your brother going like, "You want to go get a fucking Whataburger?" And I'm like, "Dude, dude." <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I've been doing. What are y'all What are y'all up to? Well, oh, fuck, dude. I also been watching uh, season one of Ray Donovan because when I used to watch with Mark, I got in on season two and three. But now I'm starting from the beginning, kind of like what you did. I'm not watching as much as you, but it's a good show. And uh, getting up on that. Also, been watching this movie, this fucking that we're going to cover tonight, the past three nights. And reading a lot about the underlying, you know, history of this, it's just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely, Jerry. Absolutely. What about you, Gabe? Oh, man. Well, feeling kind of fat right now. Uh, <laughs> trying, to rush to, trying to rush home from work, trying to... Make it to this podcast, and here I'm scarfing down a water chicken burger. You know, man, I'm just like downing it. <laughs> I felt like one of those hookers that, in the middle of the night, <laughs> just kind of downing it down in the mouth. You know, why not? Uh, as far as other things going on, you know, just keeping up with my art. Did get to watch Suicide Squad 2. That was uh, way better than the first one. Uh, funny, hilarious. Of course, it's got its uh, violence in there, so there's some blood, gore in there. Uh, but it was very entertaining. I enjoyed the shit out of that. And then uh, the new What If uh, Marvel series, if you're familiar with the damn comics, you know, the damn uh, comic books that say, What If Thanos never got the gauntlet? What if this never happened? And so they give alternatives in the comics. Well, now they made it into a damn TV series that's on Disney+. Plus. So oh, I saw the first episode already, and uh, that was pretty neat too. I love the animation; it was great. Love that show. No shit. So, I didn't even know they had made that. Yep. So, so it's uh, what was the first episode without like spoiling? But what it, what was the what if? The what if? Uh, I mean, there's not really much to it. Is just what if uh, Peggy Carter ended up getting the serum instead of uh, Steve Rogers? So basically, she becomes like. Captain well, America. she's not Captain America, but she's, you know, like Captain Britain. Oh, <laughs> shit. I think she, yeah, oh, so that, I, and you know, for... Uh, Captain Medical Center, dude. That's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's cool about that is that, you know, because, uh, you know, during those classic olden times, you know, the golden years, you know, women were undermined and 
never really, you know, sought after to go ahead and, you know, lead war or anything like that. So she's like leading the way for women. So it's like one of those strong, independent woman type of things. And it was it was really neat. I enjoyed it. It, it was fun. They're, they're not even that long. The, apparently every episode is going to be like about 30 minutes long. So, I, like this. I mean, yeah, it's short, sweet, get to the point. It's pretty neat. You know, when just when you want to throw down on a what a chicken, you're like, you know, let's put on something. You just throw a munch and you watch that, you know, that bullshit. So like, no, I'm always down for that. That's why I like, you know, fucking, uh, you know, shows because you can just put on, put one on and you're just like right away, you know, fucking. I, I love watching, you know, TV shows and movies. It's like, you know, the the greatest the greatest thing out there. That's why we do this podcast, obviously, because we like movies. So uh, let's go ahead and get into, I guess, the you know, Dracula, dude, 1931. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, what what is what is y'all's history with Dracula? Dracula, unlike most horror movies that we've done and shit, like Dracula's. I mean, at least for me, was always kind of one of those known, you know, horror movie monsters. Even since I was a little kid. But I mean, I, I don't want to take over with my stories yet. I want to want to hear y'all's first. But Chris, you know, Dracula. Hello. I don't. I don't have much of it. I mean, just always only ever seeing it in pop culture, like you know, from when you're a kid. Fucking Sesame Street and the Count, or if you're watching, or we, me, me and Gabe remember the Count Chocula commercials when we were kids. Count Chocula and Frankie Berry is up, and then the uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, fucking all this other shit, and like everyone like making fun of it on TV shows, like I and like someone will put on the the plastic vampire dude. I am Dracula. I want to suck your blood, you know, and all this stuff. And so you go into a movie like this thinking it's going to be a lot of that, you know, bullshit, you know, silliness or whatever. But no, this actually, when you watch this, and this is only a microcosm of a basis of the novel, and it made me want to go deeper into Bram Stoker, the movie about Bram Stoker's full novel in 93. It made me, like, my wife is a big fan of this. So, babe, what is it, Dracula Dead and Loving It? Yes. I watched a little bit of that. And I was like, that was humorous. And, and it's like, and then reading about the author, Bram Stoker, and reading about the Transylvania region and the history of it, and like, doesn't, I'm, I'm like doesn't the Ren, doesn't the Renfield in that Dracula Dead and Loving It look like this actor? This Renfield, they look like pretty fucking similar, dude. Yes, there's very similarities, and and yeah, and and so the, I'm just absorbed in this whole Romanian Hungarian history culture and such. And such, okay. Yeah, for for me, man, <laughs> I was uh, it was it was pretty cool. Like my my elementary school had like a lot of like crazy books. I remember like I, I um I remember going and they had like the Loch Ness monster. I might have mentioned it before, but they had like the Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot. And then I saw these these horror movie books of the Wolfman, you know, the Mummy, Dracula, Frankenstein, Godzilla. There were I forgot the name of the company that would make them, but I was like, holy shit! Like me being a fucking weirdo kid was like right away like, dude, I I love all these. Just you know, and that that was my first kind of introduction to it. And then. I uh, loved Bram Stoker's Dracula from '92, so um, I was I had always kind of wanted to get around to watching the Universal Monsters, obvious, cause, obviously, because a lot of people know like you know Frankenstein and all that from like that's what they use give, as the gimmicks for Halloween, and um, I uh, I would always hear like the Angry Video Game Nerd talk about the Universal Monsters and some other podcasts that I listened to. They were like, oh, you know that you know they would have these little ones, but they would only you know get to certain ones. Um, not like every single one. I mean, there's a shit ton, but um, I was like, you know what? Let me check it out. Are these people like this? And like, they had like Psycho 2 and 3, which I really liked. And so I was like, well, let me find, let me go and check it out. And it was about four years ago or so that I, I bought, it was like a greatest hits. And it was like the first mummy, the first Dracula, uh, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and uh, the creature, I think, and the Wolfman. So it was a pretty good like introduction. And I put this on first, and like when I first put it on, I was like 20 minutes in, and I'm like, okay, this hell no, this ain't happening. So I was kind of like, I kind of like just didn't watch it. And then I was like, you know what? Let me watch Frankenstein. So I put on Frankenstein. I was like, wow, this one, this one was okay, but it wasn't great, you know. And then I was like, you know, let me just watch. Let me now. I'm not gonna watch it in order of release. Let me just watch a random one. Let me see the Wolfman. And I was like, it's gonna be so stupid, right? And then I watched The Wolfman, and I don't know what it was, but watching The Wolfman, like, really made me, like, okay, I guess you got to be patient with these, like, because I really liked it. So I was like, let me go back to Dracula, because I guess if, you're, if you've never seen uh, Universal Monsters movie, and I think, Chris, you've seen, like, you, you like, you know, The Invisible Man, so that's, like, a great one. Um, yeah. Then it may be a little too slow for you, like, oh, if you've never seen these, check out Dracula, because it's, you know, to me, one of the, it's still good, 
but it's like one of the not it, it's not as good as the other ones so uh with that being said gabe yes sir well the, i i remember this being on uh tv when i was younger uh well, AMC, shit. how old yeah, the yeah. hell are you <laughs> uh, i mean yeah no, well, uh, AMC used to do, like, classic horror movies and stuff like this. This movie was one of those things that they would just put on their roster list of classic oldie movies. Uh, Gabe, Jim, yeah. I can step in real quick just for our listening audience. Gabe and I are old enough to remember, you guys think of AMC and it's this cool hip channel with your cool hip shows and all that shit and occasionally a cool movie. But when me and Gabe were kids, AMC was what Turner Classic Movies is now. Yeah. That that's pretty yeah that's exactly right I mean that I mean they showed all these black and white the uh, shows they even had like the old uh, Abbott and Costello meets like mm -hmm. the Werewolf Man and stuff those are good like that oh, yeah. yeah so they they had a uh, so I remember but honestly with me being that young like I, my parents would go ahead and watch like those Turner classics and they'll go ahead and they'll watch these old films and I would sit there and I would watch some of them but. Man, but so, something like Dracula just didn't keep my attention. And, you know, I was a hyper kid, so I was jumping all over the place. So, yeah, it, it didn't really have my attention. And then later on, as I started growing up and I was watching, you know, I'm watching all these other films like uh, Jason and uh, all these other vampire-type movies. Yeah. So I knew of the story of Dracula, and I seen different variations, you know, growing up. You know, we're all familiar with, like, you know, John Carpenter's Vampires. Uh, how about, you know, just Bram Stoker's Dra uh, Dracula, you know, that 92 one that you mentioned. Um, even Interview with the Vampire. I mean, just, we're all familiar with all, like, these uh, these vampire movies. But to see the old classic one? So, re-watching it just recently, man, I kid you not, this thing just kind of like took me for a turn i was like man i don't see why i just didn't uh i i know i saw i've seen part of it but i don't really remember you know i was in and out of it i'm hyper i'm running around and man it, i was watching it and it just threw me for a spin it, it's it's so neat there's like so many things about this damn movie that just it was so great honestly my my whole take on this movie if you had to say anything is that we should be grateful. <laughs> That's my words. Honestly, we are spoiled. We are. That we are damn well spoiled with the movies that we have nowadays. Because, really, th this movie is fantastic, and it just makes you, like, really, like, now it makes you want to look at more kind of modern movies today, and you'll be like, man, you can that my whole take, the, though the movie was great, the story is good. Characters are really fun to watch, and especially the whole acting thing, like how the acting is completely different from nowadays. It's just uh, my whole takeaway from this movie was really like the comparison, mm -hmm. like you know what we see nowadays in comparison to what used to be in 1931. That is a ridiculous old year for any of us really nowadays that that is crazy so you, you imagine the the first movie that actually had speech that people you can actually hear the people talk out of a silent film that you know that wasn't a silent film was the first one was the jazz singer it was 1927 27 oh. is not that far from 31 nope so you imagine like the people that were, they don't have televisions in their rooms. They're, uh, they got radio in their rooms. So when they go to the, they're going out to the movie theater to pay a nickel to watch this thing. Hmm. And they're watching these people actually talk from their mouths, not reading it like subtitles, but they're listening to it. Dude, that shit is like, that, that is scary. I mean, these people are freaked out. To us, I don't know if we're just, what, what's that word, desensitized or something? Uh. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we're just we're just numb to violence and all that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, because you see, like every action movie, like if someone gets all shot up, we're just kind of like, oh, you know, no big deal. We're used to seeing it, but if, imagine seeing something like that 
like back in these films to where like they get bit on the neck and like nothing happens. <laughs> you know, it's just... Right. It, it's just the difference in it. It's ridiculous. The, the one thing that kept bothering me uh, throughout this damn movie, and uh, it, it's not the movie's fault. It's just it was the sign of the times. Was did you all notice like in nowadays in the movies, whenever there's like a lingering moment between two characters or someone's dying or there's a dramatic moment when someone's reading something there's music playing the music score in the background yeah no i this, this like, movie did not, it didn't have that yeah no for sure i wasn't a man that's well that's what i was telling chris during the week i was like i know there because i've seen some where there's versions where they've added music because the original doesn't have any music except for the beginning which i really like you know da, da, da. it's kind of like harry potter ish you know and um but the rest of the movie, like, yeah, like, he's walking into the castle, and you just hear his footsteps, and he's walking up here, and he, you don't hear anything. Or go fast? Yes. Who's scaring you? Count Dracula's. Count Dracula's? Yes. Castle Dracula? Yes, that's where I'm going. To the castle. Yes. No. And orchestral music when he starts walking into the theater. No. In London. No. I I think I think no. the one like like I said I think the one you had you watch had the music like throughout the the thing the whole thing. Yeah. So yeah, if you saw that one, you saw like you know a, a more updated version. So. You, you, I'm, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure if you did watch it, you would. You, you know. <laughs> like the way they do with the damn Star Wars movies. Yeah, they, you had the classic, and then they just start adding shit to it. it yeah, no. One of these days, no. I'll, I'll send you like a file, a file, dude, just so you can check it. And when, once we do like another Universal Monsters, just so you can cross reference it and kind of like talk about it. But it's so funny because like it's like you have this whole big castle. And the guy's just walking around, and there's nothing. There's no music at all. It's just you know, like 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 Gabe is saying, like. You know, you you would you would hear stuff like mm, something, you know, like to to you know fill in the 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 non-talking. And now this movie doesn't have it, but um, I guess Gabe, if you, I don't know if you want to do it step by step or like not step by step, but kind of like give us a synopsis of like the film and we could talk about it or or how do y'all want to do it? I always like to see yeah, how. Yeah, that's mm. yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'll I'll go a little. Uh, I'll just kind of jump into little parts. I'll kind of I'll jump like some of these little. Little sections, right? Like just kinda, that whole, that yeah, whole beginning section. Not, My God. Just interject by saying, hey, OG Money, mind if I step in for a second? Yeah, go for it. I hate, I, 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 I hate, I, like I, I said, I get I, carried away sometimes. I hate, I hate when Chris asks. He's just like, hey, yo, so check this. Just say it like that, Chris, and start snapping <laughs> your fingers. You know? <laughs> but go ahead, man. What do you got to say? Oh, yeah. So, uh. Uh, again, this this whole movie it's it's fantastic, and uh, it does it does follow the the original story of the book, and so given that this is 1931, these people are doing the best they can at trying to make <laughs> a horror movie, and it's it's so great, and it's just like really kind of reaching out for like trying to get that that dramatic look in all these people and the, their characters faces that these people. So how it starts off, it starts off with a man in a carriage heading off to a castle. And he ends up sharing a carriage with like some other people. And he ends up saying, Hey, you know, I'm going, I'm going to this uh, castle to go ahead and meet count Dracula. You know, I got some business with him. He doesn't say what business he just says he has business. Well, all of a sudden everyone starts like kind of freaking out they're like oh you're you're going over there oh 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 you shouldn't no. go there <laughs> yeah they're just so they're so like freaking out they give like all these uh these crazed looks in their faces they're like they can't i can't believe it why don't go there it's what they said something along the lines like it's in it has to do with bats and wolves and he's all well regardless I have business that I have to meet someone there. He, I mean, this guy is doing everything he can. He's he's a businessman, and what do businessmen do? They yes. have to follow through with their business. Exactly. He's like no selling. He's like no selling all their warnings and shit, right? That's like that's that's exactly yeah. what the fuck. Especially like one lady's like, well, 
if you don't, if you got to go and we're not going to be able to talk you out of it, at least take this. And I kid you not, this part was so neat. It kind of freeze framed on her hand and it was holding a cross. Usually it, it was, and then it jumps back to the motion of her yeah. like handing it to her. Specifically, specifically, it was a rosary, and it was big enough that it could fit around his head, so he could wear it like a necklace. Right, and it, it, but it was so neat. Just the the dramatization in it. It was just like it focused in on it, and it freeze framed the whole thing. It, it didn't just like zoom in or anything. It froze on it, and I thought that was interesting as hell. So, anyways, he ends up going, starts knocking on the damn castle. Oh, so he's on his way over there, and uh, on his way over there, he ends up uh, taking the carriage. Well, the driver of this carriage is like, okay, I'm going to take you, leave your baggage or whatever over here, and I'll take your baggage. And he takes it, and they're on the way up there to the castle. <laughs> well, when they get to the castle, and he's all like, oh, driver, you can stop here. You know, he get, he starts <laughs> telling the driver, there's no driver. Hey Chris, what? when that sh- damn bat. <laughs> when you saw the bat, you saw that bat gimmick. Would you start laughing? You're like, ah! Yeah, you know, I know Chris. Like he's always like laughing at, at you know the phoniness, you know that you get a kick out of that shit when you saw the bat or all the bats yeah. really and the spiders and everything. No, I, you know I, I I wouldn't hear because I'm just like I know that they had very limited creative resources to make a movie look a certain like we have today like if they did that in a movie today i'd know it was just them being fucking stupid or ridiculous but like <laughs> in 1931 you just you just had to do the best you could with what you had so you didn't oh you, you, you didn't count it against it yeah like for me like i kind of like laughed they had like armadillos they had like a bunch of weird shit in it but go ahead gabe once he gets to the castle yeah. or something that the driver yeah, driver. yeah. yeah so he goes ahead and tells the driver, but when he gets to the driver, there's no driver. There's a damn bat. And so, of course, you know, just as uh, we were saying just a minute ago, the damn, you know, the bats and spiders and everything, they're all on strings or there's, I mean, this is the, I mean, they, they're they using like what, like fish wire, trying to use something mm-hmm. uh, thin as they could just to try to make it look like realistic that, you know, give it that impression that, you know, the driver was a damn vampire. So... Anyways, the, so he's all like, oh, what the hell? So he goes and starts knocking on the damn door, and he starts wandering through the damn house or this castle, and everything looks like crap. There's, like, dirt on the floor, cobwebs <laughs> all over the place, dirty-ass windows. I mean, this the setting for 1931, their setting is, like, pretty damn good. It, it looks really good. It looks like a damn realistic freaking castle there. It looks real good for that time. Yeah. Anyways, so who, who pops up? Damn Dracula. And he's all, hey, hey, nice to meet you. You know, I'm Count Dracula. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay, uh, I'm here for the business. Oh, good, good. Let's talk business over here. Follow me, you know. So they go off onto the back. And what he goes... What exactly does, is Renfield... I guess I never... Under, is he selling, like, property somewhere? Does anyone he, know? Yes. Yeah. He's a real estate agent, so he's like, but he does works in commercial or corporate real estate. So he's not just selling one house at a time. Like he's selling like blocks of you know uh, buildings or business units or whatever. He gets assigned now. If you remember from from Bram Stoker, he gets assigned that assignment because someone else like had an illness or whatever. So his boss would, you know, if you close this deal, you know, Dracula's a little eccentric, but if you close this deal, this will rise your star in the firm. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So that's what I was, I was like, what is he doing over there? So that's when John, John's supposed to go over there, right? Jonathan's supposed to go do that, but now they have Renfield. But they kind of like didn't have that whole Renfield part, you know, and Bram Stoker's. But this is the one where, where we get that backstory and all that, which is pretty cool. And Dwight Fry plays Renfield. He comes out on a lot of Universal Monster uh, movies. He's really, really good. I love him. And he, all the shit, he plays, um, like, the wannabe Igor, but in the actual Frankenstein movie, his name's, like, Fritz, I think, something like that. And um, he comes out in a bunch of shit, so he, he's great. I don't I don't think he comes out in Invisible Man or, or Wolfman, but he comes out in the Frankenstein Dracula ones, and, you know, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, and, uh, well, just like uh, Chris was saying, yeah, he sells real estate, and this is pretty much the whole, this is, like, the good basis for the damn story. 
uh, of this movie is that basically what he's trying to do is buy real estate somewhere else so that way he can go ahead and travel and he can have somewhere else to go. Yeah. Now, apparently they make they make a point of it in the damn series, in this movie, later on in the movie, that they're saying, well, the, the one of uh, Dracula's weaknesses is that he can't live anywhere else. He has to be in his in his soil ground. He has to be where that's the only way he can rest he, for him to rest uh, during the day. He has to be in his uh, in his given ground, yeah. which is in Transylvania. So. How in the world would he make it all the way to London? Uh, and what was it in the Abbey? That, I Carfax, think that was the name yeah, of it. Carfax Abbey. Yeah, and so how in the world would he make it over there? So they came to the conclusion, or Van Helsing in this story ends up coming to the conclusion saying, well, he had to have brought some of that soil with him in lots of crates, lots of boxes. So basically, he brought the ground with him that the dirt that he's supposed to rest in, yeah, in coffins, and he brought the coffins over there to London. So now he can rest. Well, now he's mobile. He he can go anywhere the fuck he pleases. So <laughs> pretty much. So that at this point though, but right before they go ahead and uh, start venturing out into London, uh, he's already uh, he hypnotizes Renfield. He That's goes right. ahead and hip, hypnotizes uh, Renfield, and <laughs> right outside the the damn window, you know, Dracula, I guess, spooks the shit out of him or hypnotizes him or something, and Renfield ends up falling asleep, or he knocks out. Who comes after him? Now, this is like, uh, this is a part that I kind of questioned a bit, was these three pretty ladies oh, that man. these vampire chicks, they end up coming out, and it looks like they're going to feed on him. Well... Right. That's when, huh? Hey, G Money, you know what you forgot right before that happened? What you, what, you, what remember a cool thing? Remember, because you brought up the cross, brought the rosary. Right. Remember, he's sitting down at that desk and he gets a paper cut, and and Dracula sees that right away, and he's like, it, it's like, it's like me when it's Friday morning, I can eat carbs. Oh, know, that, 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 that's right. What is? Yeah, exactly. He sees the paper cut, um, and uh, he sees the cross, right? And then he like, yeah, <laughs> when you get fucking breakfast carbs yeah dude he's like staring at the finger and then all that bull i like everything about like to me like the, the whole movie's cool I, but of course you know i think that it's funny that i'm gonna say this but i like the way the first 20 minutes is on the original more than i mean besides the crazy ass intro with gary oldman and that suit of armor then bram you know that bram stokers but like how they do the whole you know jonathan uh keanu reeves part i love like just all the quotes that dracula says he's a, like um the spider, you know, it drinks the blood of the fly or whatever, and then the, the the blood is life or some bullshit like that. And it's like, wow, I like, I like, and and the coolest thing is, is that we like they, I think everyone kind of recognizes Dracula with having that voice when it was just like Bella Lugosi's accent that that you know caused everyone to really like, you know, because it, it I, I didn't mention it, but Lon, uh, Lon Chaney Senior, Lon Chaney Junior's dad from The Wolfman, his dad who played. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera was originally supposed to play Dracula because he was friends with the director. And, uh, of course, Lon Chaney Sr. passed away, so that's when Bella Lugosi did it. So it's like, wow, just to think that if Bella didn't have that, you know, we wouldn't think about Dracula like you're saying, like that what if. Like no one would do that. Oh, let me suck your blood, even though he never says that. But, you know, everyone kind of has that as reference because of his accent, you know, so it's always pretty cool. But it's, it's people. That's exactly like you said. It's people doing a bad Hungarian accent impersonation. But the fact is, like you said, he was from what today it's Romania. But when he was born there, it was hung, Hungary, and he sp spoke Hungarian. That was his native language. He moved to New York City, lived in the Hungarian community, became an actor, played fucking Dracula for ten years on Broadway, and then go has the balls to go out to L. Play. No, he didn't go. He didn't have the balls. But it was. He was in a touring play guide, touring yep. play. They were going all over the country. They landed in L.A., and while he was there, he applied for the part, and they turned him down. But then, like you said, Lon Chaney died, and then he agreed to take less money for the role. Yeah, the thing is, too, with, like, this acting, I guess I know we all can agree that it's, like, kind of overacting, and like, but it's well, – I like it. And also you have to understand is, like, you had mentioned it we were talking about it earlier is that, you are you know, if you're if – you're, you have to understand, like, a lot of these actors were used to doing plays – 
So you have to stand out on a stage, you know, so you got every, all the movements have to be big and like, you know, you know, um, and, and just everything has to be big because you're show you're like a, in a theater of, a, of however many hundred of people from, you know, far away have to kind of like they have to you have to convey whatever you're doing, like the walk has to be overdone you know and all that so i love like just him coming out of like you know to go you know shoo his three wives away what a lucky man but um you're saying you're saying everyone had to be uh mr mcmahon back then on stage yeah you had to really you know stand out and oversell because if you didn't i mean you, you know you, you it's you know it's completely different than now where you have a camera co you know up to your face and you can just do the ray donovan you know you know eye squint and everyone gets it you know you can't do that so and, and, and the other thing, too, like, what, what makes him him is the fact that, like, he just naturally talks like that. The other thing that makes him that is the point of his eyebrows. They have points at the corners. So like, when he squints just a little bit, it accents that. And it, when someone has pointy eyebrows, it makes you think that they're, like, serious or asshole -ish. So it, <laughs> that, that kind of character needs that. asshole And he's got the perfect like look. His hair, his hair is slicked back. He's really thin. He looks like a like you know a vampire, right? Like compared to everyone else that has mustaches and everything, he's completely you know or and older. He does. He looks you know kind of like ageless because everyone looks really really young and everyone looks really old. He's like the only one that looks you know just not young, not old, just there. He transcends age. He transcends age, dude. I I date him in the thirty ones, so. <laughs> But yeah, he's like he really stands out, you know, in in the film. Um, and then he meets, like you said, they did that little crossover to the Carfax Alley. So it's supposed to be in London or something. Anyone? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Man. Yeah. At, the, at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So at that point, so the the main thing that what uh, so what Dracula wants to do, he he starts want he's wanting to travel. So he's already trying to make his way towards. <laughs> This, is, this is before you can get points from with swiping your card, right? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. He ends up the way he travels through uh, from Transylvania all the way to uh, to London is that he's taking a boat, and uh, it was so it's so neat at this point because he's got Renfield now is become his slave. He is dedicated. He uh, is uh, uh, everything uh. living for. Uh, he's doing everything he can for Dracula. You know, he's just pretty much it's messed up his mind. Anyway, so he's all dedicated. Well, you, you, I, I, I popped when I first saw this because, like, you know, I was, like, talking about uh, Dwight Fry. When they finally, when the, the ship finally, like, gets to, you know, where it needs to be, they open up the thing and he's down there and he's like, ah, 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 doing some weird laugh, dude. I was like, oh, that's the original Joker, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was like he a lust for spiders flies. Yeah, that's, he was like really like like think about that. That's like Joker like acting like in 1931. This fucker was all in. So yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I, I loved that. I, I loved his whole. Uh, yeah, I loved Renfield. He he. They end up ca they ended up catching him down in, in the in the basement of this or this little cellar of the of the boat, and Renfield is looking all. You know, crazy eye doing this weird, creepy ass laugh. You know, while Dracula's just kind of taking a snooze up in his uh his little coffin that down there in the boat. So, anyways, they end up uh there's a news newspaper kind of spin off that they ended up showing like, oh okay, madman crazed wants to eat bugs and spiders. <laughs> um, you know, he wants to eat rats, so he's been put in, and there's three horrific uh things down there too it doesn't really say what i guess it was like i guess that's where they ended up seeing uh dracula and you know or some other disturbing stuff down there well anyways they uh they end up locking up uh renfield at this point he's locked up and he's uh 
you know, at this point, you're just seeing him act crazy. He's just like all crazy eyed and talking about eating spiders. And Typical bugs. Chris on a Friday morning, right? Dude, that's it. Dude. He's like, what are we getting for breakfast? And he's like running around and shit. <laughs> yeah, and so at this point, uh, Dracula is already up and about. He's already like walking around. He's uh, kind of exploring the city already. He's walking around at night. There's a flower girl, and she's going around. Oh, flower for your buttonhole? Flower for your buttonhole. She's just telling everyone that. I was like, what the hell did she just say? Yeah, like, uh, I honestly had, uh, I had to rewind that for that I'm going to have like, to put that in the fucking intro, dude. <laughs> Flower for your buttonhole. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what the fuck she say? <laughs> He's like. Yeah. I, 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 she, she said it so quickly. You know, it. Uh, leave it to my kind of mind. Uh, I, I'm hearing all kinds of weird shit. So, yeah, I had to go back and I was like, oh, oh, okay, I get what she's doing. She's selling flowers and she, she means put it in your little, put it in your button. So as a, you're walking like a, with a cor- corsage or something on your jacket. Yeah. Okay, everyone in London is walking around with a damn top hat, fine trench coat or something of some kind. Everyone's dressed all nicely. Anyways, there's like a theater, uh, there's a theater going on and there's some people all gathered around, and here goes uh, Dracula. He's all like, "Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to these people, you know. I'm, I'm gonna." So he hypnotizes some people along the way. He makes his way to talking to this, uh, to these, uh, to these young girls, and uh, there's like a young guy there too. Let's just call well. them what they are, hood rats. Yeah. <laughs> This is like old school hood rats. That's why Dracula that's, was attracted to him. He's like, I got a couple of hoodies in Carfax, out of the cat. <laughs> well, yeah, he had three of them back home. I don't see why he couldn't have more, right? Yeah. Shit. Well, so anyways, he's fascinated with one of them in particular uh, called Mina. Mm-hmm. Now, he, he's fascinated with her and tells her like a whole little story and kind of gives her like that glaring look, you know, that whole hypnotizing look and you're like oh dang you, you know he's gonna get her no nope, i'm gonna leave see you later guys so i mean that was pretty much it so anyway she they go home and they're kind of talking amongst each other the girls are talking amongst each other they're getting ready for bed or they're getting ready to go to sleep at night and they're all talking about how odd dracula was he's such an odd fellow you know he's such a weird but he has shit. charismatic type of vibe from him. And they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, he was kind of weird. But he, he's kind of handsome in a way. And basically saying like how she likes him, but she wants to say she's creepy. He's creepy, but she doesn't want to give off too much like she's a hoe. So there she is. So she, she's, like, like, okay. he's a, she's like, okay. She's like, he aight. <laughs> yeah, he, he aight. Well, <laughs> guess what? So at this point, now all of a sudden... The whole newspaper thing starts popping up. Now all of a sudden it's talking about kids getting attacked and other people are getting attacked, you know. And the one thing that they end up uh, zooming in on, they make a whole little sequence out of it. Just to make a point out of it is that they sh- they show one of the bodies and this uh, they said that, oh yeah, this young girl ends up having two fangs in her neck. And they said, oh, that's a uh, most unnormal way of dying or they they say it in a way where it's like it's so it's such a paranormal way of losing blood <laughs> yes yes it is well, that was, I mean, that, <laughs> yes, yes that's exactly <laughs> how they say it too <laughs> yes yes it is and they, they just kind of like that's it they so just jump out of it you know like oh okay well <laughs> so they move on i was like well that's getting straight to the point thanks so they move on, they end up getting back, and they move on to Van Helsing. Now, Van Helsing is this older gentleman. He looks like he's like a psychiatrist in a way. But he, he's a scientist or like a doctor. And he's talking with this head, uh, the head council member or the head lead of this asylum, this sanitarium. Dr. Seward. Yes, that that's the name. I could not think of his name. And... Uh, well, anyways, they're talking amongst each other, and they're cur- Ben Helsing's curious about Renfield. And they're like, oh, tell me more about this Renfield. Oh, well, he's, he's a weirdo. You know, he likes to eat bugs and shit, you know, other crap, you know. Uh, he's a weirdo. 
No, no, there's something to him. Yeah, he's talking about werewolves and howlings and all this other stuff. And, huh, well, uh, coincidentally, here he comes. They end up bringing him in. Uh, the bodyguard that's supposed to be watching him brings him in, and he ends up asking him questions. And he's all, and they happen to pertain towards Dracula because the whole, you know, bitten on the neck thing is starting to gri- uh, drive his curiosity. So now he's asking... Renfield and Renfield's like, well, what the hell? Well, what do you know about this? You don't know nothing. Oh, okay, sure. They're going back and forth playing these little mind games. Whatever, man. They take them off. They set them off. And uh, now later on at this point, they end up realizing that uh, he has this uh, thing for Mina. I think that was his uh, That was his woman, right? Yeah, it was if someone – he's like, it's someone that I used to love a long time ago. But that was from the – I don't know if he says it in this one, but I know that's what it was with uh, the original Bram, Bram – or not the original, but the 92 Bram Stokers is that that was, the, that was the gimmick was that, yeah, it was someone that looked like – that someone that he loved from a long time ago and shit, so. Yeah, and they, they, he kept expressing that he didn't want to be there at that hospital. He wanted to go somewhere else, somewhere really far away. And they said, because – Someone I really care about is going to get nightmares. Someone I, I I, care about. I shouldn't be here. I need to leave. Why do you want to leave? Because of stuff. And he says he doesn't, want to, he doesn't want his yelling from waking up from nightmares to disturb Mina. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think he had like some kind of previous relationship with her already. He's the anyway, original Jesse, like uh, waking up from nightmares screaming. Yeah. <laughs> well, at this point, now... Uh, so he's back in his cell, and now he's all the Van Helsing's like already making friends with, uh, with John along with these other people, and then of course you know there's Mina. So they start talking. Uh, they go and jump to Mina, and then they show Dracula. He ends up attacking. It. I, it this was the curious part about it, though. But he ends up uh, inviting himself into the home where Mina lives and he ends up turning he's a bat and he ends up turning back to normal they don't show the transformation they just kind of jump you know they just move the camera yeah exactly they move off and on screen yeah like when (laughs) the bat's just flying over everyone (laughs) right so they jump back to him and he's looking all menacing getting close to her and then it zooms in on his face of him coming like with his big ass mouth directly at her like a pov shot point of view and you know all of a sudden it blacks out and then it jumps back to the outside Uh, or it jumps to like the next day and all of a sudden mina's there and she's talking to john like oh i can't believe it i had these nightmares and this and this she has a scarf around her neck yeah you think like okay so well i'm getting to that hold on Mm -hmm. (laughs) so at this point She's expressing about her nightmares to John, which is her fiance. Anyways, uh, here, here's Van Helsing. So he's there, and he's like, oh, he's hearing all this stuff about her nightmares, saying, oh, it, it was red, and there was fog everywhere, and these eyes that were looking at me, and it, it was so scary, and this and this. Oh, okay, okay. And he's, uh, let me take a look. Uh, let me take a look under your scarf. Well, why would you want he's to like, do let that? Me, let me take a look under your dress. And he starts winking. He starts winking at the other guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, what? Oh, no. That's so, uh, you know, that's so abnormal. Doctor. No, yeah. no, no. Please, allow me to do it. All right, all right. I, I love you. Van Helsing, right? Because he's like so, like, you know, he's believable, he, I guess. He He's polite and pushy. He's very pushy, but he does it in a polite way. Yeah. I love that. It, it's such a kind of like, I'm going to tell you what to do, but you're going to like it. And yeah. he tells you in such a nice way. No, no, you're going to let me do it. No, just let me do it, please. I'm very, not... ref- very refined individual. Yes, and that, that's what I like about him. Maybe it's his upbringing or his knowledge from, you know, his school. It's like or something. it's like when Chris wants to excuse himself to go get a refill. He's not like, y'all need anything? Y'all don't? Okay, well I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, Chris is like so polite about it, and he still gets it. Yeah, because he wants it. He needs it. You do. And, <laughs> uh, it's, my, it's my boy Chris. He gets his ass over, man. 
Oh, well, see, and th well, that's pretty much Van Helsing right here. So they take a look under the scarf. They see the two bitten marks, and they're like, oh, snap. What the hell? And she's all, what? It, it was all a dream. Well, I'm starting to suspect something else. Oh, well, guess who ends up coming into play, like, not even that long after that? Hi, I'm Count Dracula. Yeah. Oh, great. This guy again, he pops back up. I he's love, all I love, happy. I love the looks Van Helsing's, like, giving him and shit. You know, like, when he's talking, he's just, like, staring at him. You know? Yeah, I don't know if y'all noticed, but there's a... They're kind of formal way of, like, handshaking in there. They don't... No handshake in there, but, I mean, they give this nod. The whole Texas neighborly thing... Uh, you know, where uh, you see someone passing by and you kind of give your nod ahead, like, howdy, you know, or how you doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, these people, they give, like, a little bow. Yeah. Like, they, they do that. And I, I kind of, I mean, I like that. It's so neat. Uh, <laughs> these people are so... It's a pleasure to meet the right honorable gentleman. <laughs> yeah, they, they're all honorable gentlemen, and they're all doing it. It's so great. It's It's so neat, just little things like that. I was just like, man... That are, very, that are very that. lost on our society. Huh? That Did are you? very lost on our society. They're lost on yeah. They don't they don't do that no more, dude. That uh. Yeah, I know that, that man. That but that's cool. They should do that. And uh, nowadays you just hear sup, what's up. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> well, well, everyone's well, everyone's wearing suits too. I mean, fuck. They don't. What's the last time you seen a whole group of guys besides you know Chris's wedding getting over on suits? You know. Fuck. Yeah, I, that that's a whole thing. Now the whole, if you want to dress nice just to go out to the club, they don't wear no suits or something. They wear, it's like business casual yeah. with a little bit of flash to it or something. Uh, no, I, I, love, I, I, I love all the 50s and beyond movies because, like, yeah, everyone's wearing suits, dude. Even Dracula, well, just Dracula's wearing, like, the shit where it's like like Bugs Bunny would wear with, the, with like, the back <laughs> flaps. Fucking Bugs Bunny yeah, Dracula. Yeah, the whole penguin coat. Yeah, or, like, like, the whole like, pale coat. Kind yeah, of like, thing. like he's going to play the piano and shit, dude. Yeah, so at this point, so Dracula shows up, and he's talking to Mina. He's all hitting on her, being all, you know. You ever like, been licked from front to back, girl? <laughs> he's like, I already got the neck. I just need everywhere else. <laughs> My back. I just need everywhere oh. else now. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... So he's hitting on her. Everyone else is having a good conversation. Coincidentally, there's like a little kind of treasure box on the counter or like this little uh, kind of side table to the couch. Yeah. And it's open and it has a little mirror inside. So why rent, uh, Why uh, Van Helsing looks in there? Well, shit, I don't know. But he decides to look and he realizes like, oh, shit, who the hell is Mina talking to? So he keeps – the camera ends up going back and forth between – Mina and the mirror showing like, hey, Dracula's not really there. So here's Van Helsing like, oh, snap. He's all, well, Mina, it's time for Mina to go to bed. So he ends up sending her off to bed and, you know, interrupting Dracula's conversation with her. So he's all like, hey, hey, Dracula, before you split, why don't you come over here? I want to talk to you. I want to show you something. Okay, just humor me for a bit. All right, all right. Uh, I don't mind. What's going on? Well, I have this treasure box, and I think you'll be interested in what's inside. Oh, well, all right. I guess I'll take a look. <gasps> ah! he, he makes this crazy ass look. <laughs> he hits the fucking box once. Uh, <laughs> once that what, Van Helsing shows it to him, I love it when he hits it out of his hand. Like you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he has, you? He has, a, he has the whole asshole look on his face. He's like you bitch. Yeah. So he knocks the shit out of his damn hand. And he's all, oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I just don't, uh, he's all, I just don't like mirrors. Okay. <laughs> well, he's all, I have a feeling you're a vampire. Oh, this and this. I guess you're a lot smarter than you look, Van Helsing. <laughs> oh. So he's heading off the balcony. And so he, he's all, I will take my leave. So he leaves. And so there goes John to go and Look, he's all. He looks in the distance and he's all. Oh man, I can't believe it. What? Yeah. He's all. There's a large dog running across the lawn. 
he's running across the lawn. <laughs> yep, that's uh, Dracula. And he's all, yep, that's what he's doing. <laughs> but that, but uh, thank you, Mark. But that's the thing. I didn't, I didn't get that reference. Like I knew from True Blood that vampires can't see themselves in the mirror. I knew that. I didn't. I know that vampires, you know, are like they're not vampires, but Dracula's case, he can turn into a bat. I knew that. I did not know Dracula could also turn into a wolf. Yeah, he. Uh, and that seems strange, right? Because when he fights the Wolf Man and everybody else and shit. Yeah, uh, it, well, I, I don't guess know. At some I, I, point, I, or he, he I he's a wolf. He turns into a wolf and bites the Wolf Man. I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's like a bat, but I'm saying like you know how he like like even like in what is it what is it uh. Bram Stoker's when he's like killing is it uh, Lucy in the in the middle of like the garden he's like all like wolf like and shit so um, that's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean honestly, like we we've seen variations of it, but honestly, like Chris is like uh, right though that there, there's not too men there's not too much mention of him actually. Uh, you know, Dracula or a, a vampire turning into a damn werewolf. But I, uh, the way they make a point of it is that they associate wolves uh, as like low down and dirty as much as like a, a bat is more like a more like a vermin. And they, you know, they're just, uh, I guess they associate it with them too. But you don't see them too much. Like Fright Night, if you all remember that, I mean, the damn vampires turn into a damn werewolves. Oh, yeah. Um, well, he's supposed they're, to be. Oh, well, yeah, he is. A, well, they're all like a different gimmick. Um, well, I talk about Friday Night One or Two. I was talking about Two. Okay, I yeah. Because I think one. yeah, because Part Two, one of them, I think he is a wolf. Because one guy eats fucking bugs only, kind of like Renfield. He's like the Terminator looking guy, and then the other one, like they get long nails, kind of like so. It's like a mixture of like I don't know. I don't know if they're all like different. <laughs> Types of app. I guess we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to it. But yeah, I yeah, I, yeah. I know what you're well, doing. Well, okay. So at the, at this point, so I just wanted to make a point of that that uh, the reason why I had mentioned that that he ran off, so he's gone. And they they mentioned like how he ran off and he took off and he's gone. And so they were for them to go ahead and uh, so when they get back to their conversation, who's not even that far, like right outside the building is damn Dracula. He makes a point... Uh, he he does this several times in the damn movie where he flies off or he runs off, but he comes right back not even, like, a minute or five minutes later just to stand outside the door. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what the hell? Why are you going to run off just to come right back? Why don't you just go and run behind a bush and then just stay there? You're just going to be like a peeping Tom just kind of watching from afar. So... Anyways, as the story progresses, they start understanding. They said, okay, we know Mina's in danger. She's going to turn into a vampire. We have our suspicions. We need to... How are we going to do this? Well, we need to go and find out where he sleeps, and we're going to have to take this dude down. Where are we going to do this? Okay, well, we know he's over here at the, the Abbey. We just need to go ahead and find his damn uh, coffin, find where he sleeps, stab him right through the heart. Oh, okay. So they end up making their way. Uh, they end up uh, looking all around. Renfield's there. You know, Dracula's like, I'm done with you, man. You suck. You, you're you the worst slave I've ever damn had. And smacks the shit out of him, knocks him out. So he knocks him out. He falls down these long steps of stairs. Dracula goes to sleep. He kidnapped Mina in the meantime. So he has Mina. He's like, yeah, she's mine now. So guess who shows up? Van Helsing and his crew. So they're all here and... Sure enough, they're hunting around, they're looking, and then sure enough, they find Dracula. All, I, I, man, you talk about dead uh, when you're dead asleep. Man, Dracula is literally that. He is literally dead in a coffin, asleep. They're ripping boards from the top of his coffin. They're making noises. They're talking right in front of him. He's not waking up or budging at all. He's just yeah. I, I thought that was fucking funny that they're making all this noise and he's just there like. <sighs> Yeah, he's tired, man. That, 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 that was so anticlimactic for me because, like, I'm expecting the ending of this movie to either be tragic or the faces prevail, but only after a very difficult, intense struggle. But no, he's just laying there asleep and gets fucking killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so they end up stabbing him, but... Chris, like, Dracula see... can't work for shit. I'll just, I'm just throwing it out there. He can't work for shit. <laughs> You know, 
uh, what was interesting about this movie is that when they stabbed him in the heart, you don't he- you don't see any of it. The death and the violence that you would expect to see, like how we expect it nowadays. No, you don't you don't see any of that. It, even in a PG thirteen movie, you uh, you know you at least see a little something something. You know, with, minus the blood and all that. But no, no, in this movie you don't see any of that. If anything, you'll hear yelling. You'll hear. You'll even see a shadow. Uh, earlier on the boat, there was one person that ended up dying. Dracula ended up killing, and he was strapped to the uh, to the steering wheel of this damn boat. And but you only saw the shadow. You never actually saw the character. So it was interesting. So you hear the yelling like ah, like you know they got him. And so here's Mina. She's like, oh, I'm so tired and. Oh, uh, I'm I'm back to normal, I guess. Oh, okay, cool. Let's uh let's go off and have a happy ending. Cool. So there there they all go. So they're starting to walk back up the stairs with Mina, who's supposedly safe now. The end. And now it starts playing the, I guess it plays the music and stuff. <laughs> the Harry. They put it on again next time, Chris. It sounds like Harry Potter. Then go listen to the Harry Potter one, dude. Fucking funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude. Um. It kind of ends kind of funny, like like Chris said. I have to agree that you're expecting like some crazy ending. They walk down there. It's a cool little you know you know scene and shot and everything. But you know fucking Dracula just like you know you know just chilling, dude. There's no fight. There's no fight in Dracula. But I guess I guess you know they have to kind of like this is one of. I mean it's a good story, but they're like, well how how, how are we gonna you know. Uh, you just make this more. You're like, well, is Dracula gonna start fighting now. I guess it would be kind of funny to see that. So it's like, oh, now he's just asleep and they kill him. So, fuck well, it. I, I think I think what what it was is that because of those times, you, we have to stop and think about like how, you know, how everyone carries themselves back then. Yeah. You you know like uh, women were undermined. Like I uh, like I was mentioning, like women are undermined. They they don't really have a much of a role other than they play the damsel in distress or they're a house taker or a maid or some something or another. The men have to carry themselves in such a fashion to where if a woman walks into a room, they all stand up. You know what I mean? That kind of general gentleman idea. And I mean, this is not just for the movie. I mean, this is actually out on the streets. People really carried themselves like this out on the streets. They were really like that. And so because they were like that, I mean, to have violence is kind of like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not, it's, you just don't really uh you want to have it like more of a gentleman fashion so to have it like in a movie where you're witnessing this might be a little too intense for, for people that only listen to shit like on the damn radio they don't have tv so mm-hmm. they're only listening to this on the damn radio so to actually witness this on damn television like oh my god this this guy's going to bite this chick on the neck that is intense yeah, and then Dracula's like running, running off with her. So I mean, just that people are like, "Oh my God, Dracula's got the you know fucking you know uh, Mina," you know. So yeah, you know, just that I'm sure like got everyone all worked up, dude. You know, seeing somebody get kidnapped and shit, basically. Seeing a woman get kidnapped, especially. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so that was like so absurd. That's that's crazy for these people. So, but now you know, of course, nowadays, like <laughs> you know, the movies that we watch, being kidnapped in a movie is not. If anything, people expect that. They're like, well, how else is the hero going to chase after the girl? You have to kidnap her. Yeah. That's so cheesy. It's been done a million times. Well, nice. oh, come on, man. Just play along with the damn movie. I mean, this is the best they got right Play now. along with <laughs> it, Chris, you fucking asshole. Damn straight. Yeah. So, anyways, that, that that's, I mean, there's so much... You can go ahead and pick this part, this movie apart, uh, saying how cheesy it is, or how the acting was so ridiculous, or, or even just the bats and the animals or whatever, mm-hmm. just so cheesy about it. But mm-hmm. there's so much to take away from this movie. I looked on IMDb. I wanted to see the rating score on this, and it's rated 7.5. And I was looking at it in comparison to like more, yeah, more kind of modern movies. Uh, comparing it to more other things that are out nowadays and those have lower grades in comparison to like this one and i kind of had my suspicions that i bet you anything maybe half if not maybe a little more of 
that grading of positive uh, good ratings on this movie is probably because of how vintage or the nostalgia it has for this character. You know, everybody loves uh, that actor. I, I always have trouble saying his name. That's why I'm avoiding saying his Bella? name. Bella. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The ghosty. Yeah, I, I have trouble sometimes. And um, you, you, he's such an iconic figure. I mean, you remember, well, I don't know if you all remember, but during the 80s, remember the costumes you would see for Halloween? You go to Kmart, you go to, uh, you know, like one of these other stores, and they're like, hey, buy these Halloween costumes. That Bella dude, the actor, that Dracula, his face is a mask. And it's not even just that. You see him on, you'll see him on anything and everything nowadays. Mm -hmm. You can see him on a... You can see him on a purse to, like, you can see him on a poster. You can see him on anything and everything. He is such a classic, iconic figure. But if you go ahead and you mention, like, hey, did, did you ever see the old 1931 movie? Well, no, man, I, I didn't see that. But I know of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. No, nobody really will watch that nowadays. Very few people will because they like that whole nostalgia or they – their whole theme is vampire theme, but I mean, just anyone comment off the off the street that doesn't really watch horror movies and stuff, you just go ahead and ask them, "Hey, did you ever see the old original Dracula?" They're probably gonna say no, or they'll say, "Oh, I know of it." Yeah. Well, what happens in it? Oh, vampire dude goes after a chick. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay, so so we were talking about what our things that stand out to us in the movie, and for me, what stands out to me in this movie is the, the, the main scene that really sticks to me is when when Dracula gets to the theater, uh, and and he, the first thing he does is he finds this woman to deliver a message to the people sitting on that one balcony area, you know, watching from above, you know, box seats or whatever I guess you'd call it, and he says, if those, he says, if you deliver this message, after you deliver this message, you will remember nothing. And then, like, you see his eyes are, like, gazing on her. He's got those pointed eyebrows pointing down. And, like, it lights up even lighter around his eye socket area. Mm-hmm. And then it goes, goes the, the camera cuts away from his eye. And he says to her, obey. And then she goes and does it, delivers the message. Well, then he, he goes to, to that balcony area to talk to fucking Seward and, uh, and John Harker. And introduces himself, shakes hands, all that good stuff, you know. But uh, then they're talking about all kinds of things. He's like, oh, to be truly dead. And then he says, there are worse things that awaiting a man than death. Yeah, I love I love all that. There's so, like, that's the thing is that, you know, with this film, it's going to get, like, uh, it, it's it's the first of its kind, you know, really. And Bela Lugosi just does a great job. You know, like, like I, I think the first thing that he says, like, on screen is, Besides him being the guy that's giving the ride to uh, Renfield, because that's that's him, the coach or whatever. Um, I didn't notice it till watching it like 30 fucking times, right? And um, but yeah, that's him. But the, the actual thing of him being as Dracula, it's a uh, you know, I bid you welcome, you know. And I, I like just the way he says it, and like like you had said that um, there are far, you know. Well, he goes, there's a far worse things. Oh no, what does he say exactly? Um, he says, oh, he goes, to die, you know, to really be dead, that must be glorious. And then Amina's like, why Count Dracula? <laughs> he's like, there are far worse things, yeah, awaiting a man than death. And, like, all those, th- th- but, like, of course, me, you know, I'm not Bela Lugosi. I can't do that delivery. But that was my same thing again is that when he says it, you're like, that's really good, you know, because it's like he's all in, dude, when he's saying He's saying all this shit. He says something. I can't remember it now off the top of my head. But he says, um, I think he tells Renfield, he's like, um, we will go to whatever in the evening. But he, it's like the way he talks, it kind of like rhymes and shit. And it's just great, dude, the way he delivers everything. Like almost everything, almost everything that he says in the film, it's, it's you know, quotable. You know, of course, I, haven't, I only saw it fucking uh, the other day. And it's not like one of those Ninja Turtle movies. Where even, though, even though I watch them, I can't even quote them. But it's still quotable anyway for me at least. But yeah, guys, want to give y'all's, y'all's ranking? Or you still got a little bit more to say about any any other parts that y'all liked? Or pieces? Yeah, uh, I, I, was explaining to, I was explaining to Chris my favorite part was the uh, 
was uh, uh, the bodyguard for Renfield in there. It was like my favorite part of the whole damn movie. Rent, he ends up shoot, uh, ends up attempting to shoot Dracula as a bat. And Van Helsing comes out and says, hey, don't waste your bullets on that. That bat can't die by mere bullets. And he's all like, oh, man. He's all, so next to the bodyguard happens to be a maid. And he's holding the shotgun in his hand. He looks to the maid and he tells the maid, hey, he's all, uh, all those people, they're crazy. She's all, yes. Yes, they are, sir. And then, <laughs> then the damn maid, he's all, then he looks at the maid again, and he's all, actually, you're kind of crazy, too. Yes, yes, I am, sir. <laughs> oh, he makes his face like, oh, shit. So he starts backing away with his shotgun real slowly off screen. Man, that was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I, I enjoyed that out of the whole mm-hmm. damn movie. It was so great. When I when I when I first saw it, like one of the funny things that he that or not like just you know of course I love I love the beginning because it has you know Dwight Dwight Fry uh, or Renfield you know normal, but like all the lines too like he's like I never drink wine and <laughs> when you first watch it you know I fucking I, I you know when you first see that you're like okay this is that whole Dracula thing right and and uh, just the charm that he's there good night. Mr. Renfield, like that—that's just great. So I'll go ahead and um, when I first saw this, like way back when, I was all like, I thought it was okay, but if I would have ranked it, you know, or gave it a rating back then, because you know, whatever, I would have gave it a five because it was really slow, and I was like, okay, I, I appreciate, it, I like it, but now, or even even the way after that, I've been a, I've been like a big fan of it, like for the past close to two years now. Um, and nowadays, to me, it's it's one of the, I would still say like top ten Universal monster movies. I know that it's not as action as the other ones are. They're really you know action packed and action packed for a Universal monster. You know what I mean. But um, this one, I give it a seven out of ten. I think it's it's really good. It's even like close to seven point five. I'll say seven out of ten because I think the other ones are a little bit better. Um, and it's one of those films that. If you're gonna be there in the dark, you're just having, you're eating popcorn, like you said, like Gabe said, you know, you're like, wow, dude, this is like the, it's so scenic, this this film, and it's like it makes you appreciate what you have now, like, cause you see every every like almost everything, it's got like fireplaces and candles, and like we never have shit, like you know, no one has their fireplace to keep them warm anymore and shit, you know, so you know, unless uh, you know, it's the Texas, you know, freeze and shit, but um, <laughs> it's it's really it's really fucking cool to see a film like this, so yeah, seven out of ten. Really awesome film. It's one of those films that I, I love to go back to just because it's it's truly one you know one of a kind and it's the first of its kind and it, Bella Gosi's awesome, dude. So Christopher J, motherfucker. Easily, def, definitely giving this a nine. Damn. This is this movie's excellent. I mean, I mean, it's like it has nothing to do with the that. Trulies. It has nothing to do with the Trulies. That. No, shit, no, I mean, it just has everything to do with its its basis is in a well-written story, a novel finalized, published, published in 1897, uh, you know, and, and just no matter what time period you try to adapt it to, it works. Yeah. The dialogue's great, the acting is great, Bela Lugosi is uh, easily, of course, duh, the star of the fucking thing, his facials are phenomenal, his vocal delivery is phenomenal, of course, he had a decade of practice playing this fucking character, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just everything about it. the story is good, the dialogue's good, settings are good. I think it does slow down from the middle toward the end, but still, just I, and I mean, everything about just the lore of Dracula and the origins, you know, Vlad the Impaler, and you know, Transylvania history, and Hungarians versus Romanians, all that, that's all just super interesting to me too. So. I always laugh that you like you like dig all that bullshit because it's like the thing that I don't, I don't even pay attention to. You're like Romanians, Hungarians, okay. So, <laughs> Gabe, dude, what do you got? What do you got for us, dude? Ooh man. Well, you're probably not gonna like this, but I got a six point five for this movie. Uh, yeah. Not not because it, it's a bad movie. Not because of the actors or any of that. It's really just overall because I am spoiled by the way these new movies are. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, pretty much, like, every time I'll, I'll talk about horror movies or somebody references horror movies, 
my go-to is usually like these 80s types movies or or yeah. at least something more recent or things that were more commonly known about or you know it, it's the whole 80s went above and beyond about you know they, they went far into like murdering masking massacres and you know all kinds of crazy stuff and though i can appreciate dracula and being this origin uh you know of horror and it, it's a fun watch it's cool but i i can honestly tell you and i'm going to tell you the damn truth like, hey, I love horror and everything, but I'm not going to probably end up watching this movie again. <laughs> if someone suggested it, yeah. and they'll say, like, hey, let's watch this movie and stuff. Yeah, sure, why not? I ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> that's, that's more of that what this movie is. I, Though I appreciate the story and everything, again, I'm spoiled by today's, you know, all the graphics and storytellings and extra backgrounds and music and stuff that they add. I'm spoiled by all of it. So for me to go ahead and go back and watch this, I mean, that's cool, but my the only thing I can really see out of this movie that I just keep getting from beginning to end, from just the opening title to the end credits, it's just the takeaway of how different times were in comparison to now. I'm just like, oh, man, we we used to do that? That's uh, something different. <laughs> I, I, did not, I did not know about that or... Wow, that's crazy! Or you, you know what I mean? I mean, that's all. I'm, I, <laughs> You're just I'm like whoa. Myself yeah. This. Throughout the whole movie, I didn't even like I I didn't even catch myself saying anything about like oh man, Dracula's backstory totally matches with the book. I, I'm not saying any of that. My first response was, no shit, look at that. There's like no music playing in the damn background while they're just looking at each other. That's funny. It's just as funny, silence. You know? Yeah, it's just uh, it's just little things like that. I'm I'm picking it apart because I'm too busy. Like, it's hard for me to co- just to watch the damn movie. I'm I'm comparing it to, like I said, I, I'm spoiled. That's my fault. You know, I probably should be more into the older stuff. But yeah, I mean, that's yeah, it's just like what I watch and just what I see. And <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's a good movie, good story. You know, <laughs> I love the actors, but. That's... I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, that's as far as it goes, and I'm probably not going to watch this again. No, it's uh, funny. Unless... That's funny. I, I had heard a podcast because, like, I do the same guys I listen to. Like, there, there was the guy said the exact same thing. He goes, "It's cool. I can appreciate it. You know, it was fun oh. in, in pieces." <laughs> But it's one of those films. I'll be honest with you, bro. I'll probably never go to watch again. You know, and then I started laughing. I was like, I was like, Dan Chase, you piece of shit. You know, and uh, I was like, well, yeah, you know, because like that's how I felt when I when I first watched it. And I know it's not your first time, but I guess it, it, I guess it's your mindset. And like, I 100% agree with you. It's like there's so many other things out there. Why would you go back to something that's so kind of chill? But like, I guess me, I'm in that spot to where like I appreciate the scenicness and I like the quietness about it. You know, so. If you don't like quiet, and, and I, you're like a, you know, you jam the fuck out too, you know. So it's like you love to, and I'm like, I'm in that phase of my life where I like like more peace than I like like the chaos. So I guess that's why I, I'm selective with the jamming now, and you know, and I'm doing more jamming now than I have ever than ever before. Even though I like the peace, it's weird. I don't know. Fuck it. Anyway, <laughs> I like the peace more than the chaos. Winks at Mark. Yeah, yeah, no, so, no, I mean, 100% agree, so, no, ex- exactly, like, why am I, like, you're like, why am I gonna go watch a slow film with no music when I can watch this brand new film called Suicide Squad, or this brand new whatever, because it's brand new, and it's gonna be action, we're gonna have fun, and all that, and there's all these kinds of crazy horror movies, I'm, you kind of got me into that, too, to where, like, why waste your time, you know, just doing whatever, watching the same shit when there's, oh, it's something brand new, you know, like, like you got you got me to watch a, a lot, a lot of, you know, newer horror movies that I would have never watched, and, it's always fun because you're like going into this whole new, you know, Whataburger chicken sandwich, I guess. You know, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Starfing it down. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> See so. how far uh, far open my throat will open, right? <laughs> Fast like I can get this fucker <laughs> no going. No homo. No <laughs> homo. You're like, it's okay. It could be a little homo. Not a big deal. Not a Just big deal. But, uh, <laughs> no, I 100% agree. And um, I like to watch. I hadn't watched it in a while, so. Anyway, we'll probably be doing Halloween the newest or 2007 next. We're not 100 percent that might change, but uh, we'll you know fuck it. Did we call it in the ring as usual week to week? And this was episode 62, right, Chris? Yep. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. 
and we'll see you on the next one. You gotta be shitting me. That mother's strong. <laughs> yeah. Peace! Peace. Sayonara!